This podcast is brought to you by The Shift. Hello and welcome to the Storytime Podcast. I wanted to jump on here really quickly before the episode starts to explain my microphone situation. Unfortunately, when I plugged in my earphones, I didn't realize that the input on my microphone had changed to the earphone microphone. So sincere apologies for that. I sound a little tinny and you can hear me ruffle the mic a couple of times. But luckily, Sean's microphone is perfect and he's the most important part of this podcast anyway. Uh, So with that said, let's get into it. It's story time. Hello and welcome back to the Storytime Podcast. I'm your host, Claire Clizer on the internet and today I have with me Sean Burke. Hello. Hello Sean. Thanks very much for having me. It's good to be here. Thanks so much for coming on. Uh, would you like to tell everyone where to find you on the internet before we get into it? Sure. You can find me at Sean Burke Show uh, on Instagram and Twitter. These days are where I'm most active and I make comedy sketches on there. I generally just post funny stuff if I can. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Pop over. Say hi. Yeah, so I was recording recently with uh, Chris Asandum from TikTok. I don't know if you know him, but... I was telling no. them that when I was thinking about bringing back the podcast, I was actually thinking about starting a different podcast called Fangirl, yeah. where I just like bring people on and just fangirl over them. <laughs> <It's funny. laughs> but instead, I decided to like incorporate a, a quick segment of that and start into the start of the story <laughs> time. So I just want to say, like, me and you go way back. Like, we did class years and years ago on YouTube. Um, and but like you've continually brought out such a like really really funny stuff and like I've, I've messaged you recently it's the stuff you're bringing out recently it's just better and better and better and it's just like I, I, Kelly from the Tri Channel and I'm sure you know Kelly yes but mm-hmm. it, it, she'd be messaging me as well we were messaging me a couple of days and she was like show me where it's just on fire and I was like I know it's just better and better, and better so like you, the stuff you're bringing out lately is actually brilliant and uh, yeah keep it up Thanks so much for saying so. <laughs> it's 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 a nice feeling. I I I, I uh, like yeah, like you say, we we've been making videos like we were collaborating literally years ago. When I, for those who don't know, I've been living in the UK for like five years now. But before that, I was making YouTube videos. I started out in Dublin, and we were making sketches together back then, like 2013, 2014. This year, though, because of like lockdown and a few other factors, like I've really gotten back into making the comedy sketches and. I'm really grateful for it as well. I think it's been a great creative output to have this year and something to focus on. It's given me something to really do and the the extra time that everybody's had. I've just said, you know what, I'll just focus on that and go for it and uh, and not overthink it as well. So it's really nice to, when I hear people say nice things about it, of course, it's a lovely feeling. Can I ask you a question actually out of curiosity? So I've noticed that you were getting quite a lot of traction on TikTok, but you seem to be more focusing now on Instagram and Twitter. Mm. Yeah, mainly Twitter. I think that suits my sense of humor best out of all those kind of platforms. What I found with the TikTok stuff is, well, a lot of my videos would be longer than a minute for a start. Yeah. And I, I just, I understand like cutting stuff down, but I'd rather not. Like, I feel like I'd just be cutting out jokes, you know, just to make it fit. And I, I don't know, the more I use TikTok, like, the less I felt my style of stuff worked on it. Like it, it can be it a bit wordy at times. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like I'm at the stage now where I just, I just want to make what I want to make. You know, I don't want to have to edit my stuff too much, you know, to make it appeal to someone else. And to be honest, I've, I'm, I'm I neglect, I've neglected Twitter for years, really. Like I, I've always had it and it's always been my, favorite platform to go on to just waste time with funny stuff like the memes and the sense of humor on there has always been so sharp like and spot on for me uh, and i think now that's um become the one that i'm most fond of and i think works best for me i think people will give give it a chance if it's a weird idea if, if you yeah. feel like something's a bit niche like twitter is probably the place for it yeah, and you then, actually have brought out a couple of things lately that I thought might might have been a bit niche, but for me they were my niche. So you had yeah. a, an influencer being interviewed on the radio, on, on the like by a yeah. like, media person. <laughs> absolutely weak over that one. And then <laughs> ages ago you had uh, one that was like, "Who did this? <laughs> I shall put this yeah. on my social media and try to find the person." Yeah. Who did it. Exactly. That's the biggest. That's my biggest ever Twitter video as well, and it's like. <laughs> 
I was like, oh, was so I was like before I posted, I was like, is is anybody gonna understand this? I'm like, but it's just, and I saw it again today. Now people tag uh, that video under any time somebody rep reposts something on Twitter and says, oh, "Who man. did this?" It just bothers me. It's like like people are just like picking these bits of media just out of the air, like. Yeah. Where did this come from? Yeah, like, yeah. Where did you see it in the Where first place? Then? What do you mean who did this? <laughs> God, it just wound me up so much. And I think people the people enjoy that because they could see it. Like it's happened to me. I'm sure it's happened to you. Like people have stolen stuff. And it was just really it's the closest thing I could get to. You know, when you're just like, I just want to be really sarcastic to someone. Yeah. It was just that tone, and I, I think there was definitely a little bit of real spice in it. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the best ones that ever looked. Yeah. Real spice. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Right, so come here. Let's, let's get into your story. What story are you going to share with us? Sure. This is, this is, it was hard to pick one in particular, um, but I... I decided I was thinking back over what I've done over the years, like will I do a comedy story or like a, a going out story? But I think one that always comes back is uh, the first time I went into railing. Um, and so this is like 2013, and just because it's a story like amongst my group of friends that we always end up like retelling. And basically, I went into railing uh, for the first time. I went a couple of times because I loved it so much. I went with my friend Rory in 2013 and like he, he'd be one of my best mates and we had a great time. So we started, uh, have you ever gone into railing? Have you ever yeah, done it yourself? Yeah, I have. It's, it's so much fun. Like it's, for those who don't know and have the, oh, I suppose it's probably difficult now actually, but <laughs> when it becomes a thing again, I would highly recommend it. Like basically you just get trains from country to country across Europe. We flew into Amsterdam and I barely explored Europe by this stage and just went from there to like, uh, to where did we go from Amsterdam to, to Berlin to, um, to fucking like Bruges, Budapest, Krakow, so many places over the course of two weeks. And like, I think I was like 22 at that stage. So I could go drinking every night and like not be completely decimated. By that, you know? Like these days, it's, it's you really want to have to earn that. <laughs> You've got a special guest there on your lap. Yeah, she uh, was paddling around in the background. I could hear her pause, so I let her, up. <laughs> let her up. Get involved, why not? <laughs> but um, but when you're that age, like you can go out, and that's what it was for a couple of weeks, basically. And so yeah, I'm doing I wouldn't be able for it now. I don't think. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Combined with all the traveling then, like, and sometimes the trains might be like four, five, six hours long. But, uh, you know, it didn't really matter then. But um, going out drinking and, and staying in hostels. I'd never stayed in hostels before. And I think, and I enjoy solo traveling as well. So if you are the kind of person who, who doesn't mind solo traveling, like a hostel is a great place because you can go there and everybody else is in the same mindset. You can meet people from all over the world and just end up having a great night with them meet some new friends having a laugh and so basically we were going from hostel to hostel we we're getting more bold as we go on we we're like yeah let's go to this one this one's highly rated we're using a, a place called um a site called hostel world yeah that was it I know it well, yeah. yeah and like this we were only booking places that were like 99 percent rated it was all really good stuff and we'd had a, a fine experience up until up until we got to hungary so we were going to Budapest, and um, and listen, like we, like me and Rory, like we 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 love a drink, but like we're not necessarily like party animals, you know. In a way, we wouldn't be that all night rave type lads. But um, we saw this place. It was called Grandio Party Hostel, I think it was called. And um, but like the rating was really really good. Like everywhere else we'd been, we're like, all right, that looks cheap. That looks fun. Let's just book that. So we booked that for three days. And um, and uh, showed up. So we got there like mid afternoon, and we walk in, and it's it's in a courtyard. So it's like old kind of dilapidated flats almost. Okay. That have been converted into these um, hostel rooms, basically. And I think that's like a genre of bar and and hostel in Budapest called ruin bars, basically that were all dilapidated buildings that have been repurposed. But that's kind of what they're going for. So we're like, oh, that's cool um anyway then we go to check in and normally when you check in in the hostel 
you give them like your passport, you just give them your details and they say, okay, here's your keys and so uh, this is your room and you're in this bed. But there was an extra stage to this one uh, where basically the guy was reading like a disclaimer, a kind of legal thing that we had to sign. And he was like, yeah, so just so you know, uh, you know, then there will people be drinking here, it'll be loud. People are doing drugs in your room. People will be having sex in your room. Um, and this is just to say you're aware of that and you're fine with it. And you're like, uh, you're like okay. <laughs> Surely they're just, that's all part of it. They're just like, yeah. oh, let's scare them. Like, you know, we're so crazy here. And we're like, okay, yeah, yeah, we'll sign that in case we see something. So we sign these disclaimers and then um, throw our stuff in the room. This is early enough in the day. So it's quiet. There's no one around. But it's like basic like imagine just like concrete walls and like a couple of tiny like windows in the corner and there's literally like what was it there was maybe 10 beds in this room so like five bunk beds yeah and we we me and rory weren't even sharing a bunk bed he was in the corner and i was on one like at the far end of the room in the middle of the room and then um so we throw our bags in 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 there and then say right let's go out have a look around as and you do, sorry, was the lockers or did, were they just loose in the room, your stuff? I think, I'm pretty sure, for some reason I feel like they're just loose in the room, but normally there are lockers yeah. or like cages under your bed where you can throw your stuff. So we throw them in there and then we go out and go for a walk around and, uh, and then just somewhere nearby. And then we come back and we were so naive, like looking back now and so innocent. We literally prepared a packed lunch <laughs> that was in our bags, like in this room, in our rucksack. And we're like, oh, I'm a bit peckish. Let's let's go up and let's go, let's go up and get our lunch. So we go in, literally like an hour after we checked in. Open the door, um, the lights are off for some reason. Uh, flick on the lights, and we're in between. There's two separate couples already going at it at like 3 p.m. in the afternoon, like fully. <laughs> like flick the lights onto this, and we're like, uh, okay. And there's me, but they didn't stop. You know, so they're like. <laughs> We're like, oh, I guess we better just get our lunch. And there's me like, where the fuck is this ham and cheese sandwich? Get me out of here now, please. I'm like, And like, it's a rucksack. So I've packed it with like two weeks of stuff. And I'm like, where is this? Where is it? So I'm like rooting around, rooting around, finally find that, trying to keep my eyes down. And then I'm like, right, let's get out of here. And we're walking out. And then some of them, one of the couples, like Ned Coitus, just goes, uh, do you mind turning the lights off on the way out? <laughs> like, uh, yeah, okay. So flick them back off. And then we're cut to me and Rory. We're both like sat in the courtyard, like kind of in silence for a couple of minutes, just eating our lunch. A bit like, a bit rattled. We're like, oh, okay, that's uh, earlier in the day than I expected anything like that to even Definitely. happen. Definitely. And we're kind of freaked out. We're like, I, I like, like I said, we're not like party animals like that. Like, sure, we'll go out and have a drink, but I want to be able to go back to my room and just be able to sleep, you know, undisturbed. And we're like, we're here for three days. We've been here like two hours and we've already seen this. We're like, what are we going to do? So basically, we go out for the rest of the day. We're like, right, let's just go out from here. We can just move on. It'll be fine probably by tonight. Go around, see Budapest. I don't know if you've ever, have you ever been to Budapest. Uh, no. It's nice. It's a lovely city. It's like really cheap and uh, loads of like it's probably popular with like stag parties and it all makes sense now as well. Like it's got the history, but definitely a big, uh, big uh, party vibe. So we went around and spent most of the day just looking around, got dinner out and then came back and it was the evening. And by this time we were like, I don't want to, I don't want to go to bed. Like, I don't want to go back into that room. So like there's a bar in the courtyard and we met a few people there and we just kept sitting there and kept ordering drinks until like three or 4 a.m. And then we we're like, I don't want to, we, did, we didn't want to go back into the room. We didn't know what we we're going to find. That's what we found at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. Like, yeah. what are we going to find at midnight? So eventually, though, everybody else is gone. And we're just sat there and it's like, right, I need to, I need to get some sleep. And uh, so we, we both go up to the room and it's pitch black. And, but it's, from what I can tell, it's quiet. Okay. So we both find our individual bunk beds it's fine we get in them and after a few drinks as well you know you usually nod off pretty quickly and it's like okay i think i think we've gotten away with it <laughs> right so then cut to the next morning um i'm woken up and i'm on the top bunk 
Rory's in the separate, he's in the separate place all together. And my bed see, feels like it's rocking back and forth for some reason. Oh, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that's nice. I've been rocked, you know, gently awake. And then, you know, when you are still actually waking up and like reality comes back to me, I'm like, oh, hang on. And I can hear some, you know, questionable noises coming from the bank, the bunk bed underneath me. And I'm like, I, I think, I think there's a couple of people on the bed beneath me going oh, at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I'm like, at this stage now, fully awake and kind of mortified. And I'm like, oh, I'm not going to get out of bed and just climb the ladder past them and be like, hey, don't mind me. You know, and I'm looking over at Rory in the corner in his in his bed. He's awake and he's just laughing to himself because he's not having the same issue whatsoever. So there's me. I'm like, okay, right. I'm just going to have to wait this out, basically. I have my, uh, at this stage, I still had an iPod Nano as well. I was like, you know what? I'll just, I'll just listen to some music. You know, and and I'll, I'll, until you know things takes a course, and I can move on. And then I so like I put I put that in, put in my earphones, and put down the the nano next to me. Let's do a couple of songs. But then accidentally knock it off the oh, bed no. and through the bed. So it's still <laughs> in the nano, and my earphones are still in it, are still in my ears. And presumably now the iPod is just dangling above these people. Like, you know, in Mission Impossible 1 when Tom Cruise is coming down from the vent and he's like above the floor. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck. I'm like, do I just, do I acknowledge this? Do I say sorry? So I said, no, you've, you've ignored it up until this time, until now. Let's just keep going with it. So basically, like the French guy who's opened the vent and then pulling up Tom Cruise. There's me like slowly just trying to get back up i'm like maybe they didn't know us maybe they didn't know us <laughs> finally get it back up listen to a few songs the rocking stops and then uh, i see a bloke in uh what looked like in my mind it's like a bright red thong just walk out of the room a few minutes later and then i had a bit of peace <laughs> and uh and the, yeah and that was that and then me and rory were like right this isn't for us so <laughs> We're, we're like literally uh, we literally checked out that day we're like we're so naive we're like and we were giving them the story we're like yeah oh no no our roots changed no yeah no we yeah uh, no, we're just gonna go to a different city now yeah our route changed in that we walked around the corner to a different hostel and just stayed there for the next two days but uh yeah not really the uh the, yeah i the feel like that was like the worst kind of hostel for irish people to stay in as well because we're like that just yeah. seems like my worst fucking night <laughs> So repressed. We barely talk about sex here. Like, yeah. Never mind just listen to other people do it. Oh, yeah. oh, like, oh my god, I am not prepared for this. The two different couples having sex in the same room is bananas. I know. Like, <laughs> like, like, like at the simultaneously, they probably looking across each other like, "Hey, you too. What are the chances?" Like, <laughs> Oh um, god! But yeah, but uh, other than that, I mean, that was the maddest thing to happen on that trip, uh, I think. Um, but uh, like everywhere else, you know, it was lovely. It was pretty quiet. Although I remember the last place you went to was Krakow, and uh, we so and it was our last night, and we were going all out. And we'd actually met uh, a few nice like Polish guys who were, who were locals there, and we were playing uh, pool with them, and they kept buying shots. And this some it was called a. It was called a kamikaze. The shot was, and uh, which is suitably named because I don't remember the end of the night. Anyway, <laughs> we got talking to a guy who who actually used to work in Queens. I remember in Drumcondra in Dublin, and then moved back to Poland. So that was nice. We had something to. He knew a bit about Dublin, so we were chatting about that. Uh, the next day, though, uh, when I woke up, like we, I, we still to this day, it's a mystery how we even got back to the hostel because. Rory has a memory of us being lying down in the park, him with a map to his face, just going, where are we? <laughs> At 3 or 4 a.m., which I'm pretty sure when I think about it geographically, there was a park right next to the hospital, so <laughs> we probably were 10 meters away. Uh, and I woke up the next day, and not only was my phone uh, and my wallet gone, my entire pocket was gone. So somebody had said, you know, feck it, if I'm, I'm going to mug this guy, I'll just take the whole pocket. Just ripped off. I was like, oh, fair play, that's an efficient way to rob someone. 
Um, like I'm sure it wasn't funny at the time, but it's pretty funny now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, like years later, I'm like, fair play, you took the whole pocket. Imagine that. I've never seen that before. Um, and then the next day, it's like I have a reputation for being a bit of a lightweight. Like when I have a bad hangover, I literally I feel like I can't. Yeah, you, you feel me. Like, I feel like I can't even move an inch without being like, oh, I'm going to just like yeah. explode the vomit everywhere. And that was how the rest of that day felt. So literally, I knew we needed to get out, get some food, um, print out our boarding passes as well, because we had to go get a plane at the end of that day. So we printed out our boarding passes, managed to just like, tr- like slowly walk to a web, uh, like a cafe and like get a Subway sandwich down me somehow. Then went to um, went to the airport and literally did, by this stage I'm like we're flying back from Poland so it was like a couple of hours I think on the plane and um, and I just go like green for like hours on end and I'm just sat there like I can't move I can't move I was literally just looking forward at my seat once I'd sat in it and like just sweat is just pouring down my face as well the entire trip and like just don't move just don't move just get me to Dublin and Rory was like he was pretty hungover as well so he was like just neither of us get sick on this flight uh, that'll be a success in itself neither of us get sick and then um so then we finally land everybody gets up i wait till the last possible moment to get up rory walks ahead of me and he tells me in hindsight he was just about when we got when you know when you get to the steps coming off the plane he was just about to turn around to me and say i can't believe it neither of us got sick on that plane little did he know in the time that he'd gotten up i'd stood up and that was enough my body to be like how dare you move two feet and i, I just <laughs> ran up the aisle to an arrow stairs so i was like i need a bag now and you should have seen her face she's like oh god managed to get a plastic bag somewhere so by the time rory turns around to say that i'm at the top of the stairs face first in a plastic bag just heaving with people still getting off the plane walking past me as well i was like oh god <laughs> Okay. Got a bag. I thought you were going to say projectile vomited all over the seats or something. Oh yeah, thank God, thank God. I was like, what a what, what a return to Ireland after that trip. Immediately vomiting upon oh, all over planes are the worst. Oh God, yeah. I mean, like air travel in itself is just stressful enough when you're completely sober and feeling healthy, you know. So being hungover going through that experience is I wouldn't wish that on anyone, but I'm sure it's happened to a lot of us. I'm still stuck on the pocket. I still can't believe he took the entire. You must have just been like, why is there a mat? I know. I was like, I could have sworn. I was like looking at it like it was an optical oh, illusion. I was like, hang on. This <laughs> goes right to the, to the actual trouser leg. Where is the rest of it? <laughs> oh, um, that's yeah, hilarious. That was a pain. But, uh, but overall, great trip. Would highly recommend it to anybody who's listening and can still get the, like, there's like a youth interrailing pass i think we got um trip of a lifetime sure i went back and did it again the year afterwards as well so, oh, yeah and now now minus all the uh you know the the vomiting and um and <laughs> sex hostels <laughs> 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 but still would would recommend yeah um, definitely yeah. would recommend it it's such a good experience hopefully now people will be able to do it again next year mm, yeah fingers crossed but uh yeah a hell of a trip Thank you so much for coming on to the podcast and sharing your story. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Was that was that a, was that an okay story? I, yeah, I, that was a really good story. I, 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 I'm going to never forget that pocket thing, and, <laughs> and or the two people in the same room either were also yeah. took away. <laughs> I, I never know. Like obviously, like Irish people, some people think like I probably do have the gift of the gab, but literally, in my mindset, my my experience is always like you know if you have something to say just get in say it quick and get out so like the the prospect of having to pad out a story is like well you just get notions about yourself like you yeah know, like, part of it time. part yeah. of the reason like part of the idea for the story time podcast was not only to like jump on the story time trend that was popular on youtube like two years ago um but it's also that I, I did notice that a lot of Irish people, once you get into the pub and you have a pint, it's story, 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 story. It's like everyone yeah. has a story. And yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, I was like, I know that everyone has one. <laughs> yeah, you're right, actually. You're right. I had to, I had to choose between a few. Was like, you are right, yeah. When, you, when you're actually forced to think about it, it's like, you know, over the past week, I've been like, oh, yeah, what would be like my go-to stories? And everybody, everybody does have some, whether it's just like a crazy night out at the very least. We've all got one. Yeah. 
Do you want to remind everyone where to find you online? And I'll make sure to put all your links in the description on YouTube and the audio notes on this audio platforms. Sure. You can find me. It's at Sean Burke Show, S-E-A-N-B-U-R-K-E Show. And uh, that's on Twitter and Instagram. Um, I am also on YouTube. I might start making YouTube videos again soon. But right now, Twitter and Instagram is the place to find me. So, yeah. Come on over. Did you ever see, just before you go, that tweet that blew up on Twitter where the guy was like, uh, what did he say? He said, John, John is the real name and Sean is like a fake name. Oh. <laughs> I can't remember what he said. But I just remember oh. Sean Connolly and me being like, what is wrong with this person? Oh my God, yeah. No, something came out that, there's always something like every three months that's like designed to wind up Irish people that like an American has gotten wrong about Irish culture. Yeah, like the American making the tea wrong. That was perfect. Oh, that was on purpose. Is, like I look in her eyes and it looks like she's not joking. I just don't know what's real anymore. The most recent one to do with the names was, I think there was a Cosmopolitan article that described Sean, S-H-A-W-N as the traditional Irish yes, version. Yes, I think you're right. right. I think that's what it was, actually, yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. It's not even nearly hard enough to spell, right? You need at least one father in there. <laughs> but, yeah, you did that. That's on you. <laughs> Leave us out of this. Yeah. Uh, right, well, thank you so much for joining the podcast. And uh, please, everybody listening, go check him out on Instagram and Twitter and his other social media platforms. Uh, thank you so much for listening to the podcast. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel or follow us on your preferred audio platform. Thank you so much to the patrons that make this podcast possible. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. This podcast was brought to you by The Shift. For more like this, check out theshift.ie.